Hey everyone, we got some good news and we have some bad news. The good news is this is starting to look like a car again, which is pretty crazy. But the bad news is my time is up here at Stevie's. Luckily Stevie gave me a few days to get the car out of here and we're still good friends. There's no weird beef between us or anything, but at the end of the day, it is his garage and he's been nice enough to let me have my car here this long. So I'm super thankful for that. I couldn't have gotten this far without him, honestly. I'd like to try and get this car as a roller because that'll be a lot easier to move if I can actually have the car on the ground with wheels on it. So with that being said, today I want to focus on trying to attach the shock towers to the frame rails and then also the firewall to the frame rail down there on both sides. So the first thing I want to do is get this frame rail self-tapped in so that I can close up the gap on the floorboard here. So I'm going to start with running some self-tappers along the seam here. I'd say we've definitely closed up that gap a tremendous amount. So I'm gonna keep working my way around to the other side. All right, that's looking real good. I think what I want to do now is start tack welding some of that in and maybe even just fully welding it in. Ah, it's so cool. I love seeing it come together. And if you're loving it, don't forget to drop a like on the video. It helps a lot. Thanks guys. Already. Ah. started to make some good progress there was a lot of holes I had to fill in so that's why I look kind of blobby but that's all right as long as it works I'm gonna start with doing the other side of the frame rail now which is on the inside of the car which is probably gonna be a lot harder to get to all up in here All right, we're making some great progress. We got the passenger side frame rail completely welded in. Now we need to start working on the other side, the driver side. Shouldn't be too bad. Got it all right here. And same with the side. So we'll get started on that. That side's looking pretty good. Now I need to move on to doing the inside of the frame rail. 
I do still have some lines here. So I'm going to put a plate on top of them. That way I don't get sparks or anything right on top of fuel lines. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> All right, we have some solid welds on there. Now I'm gonna move to the inside of the car and start welding there. And I think I'm also gonna take off these self-tappers. On the other side, I welded the self-tappers to the car and it made some really big blobs. So I'm gonna try and avoid making big blobs on this side. There's no way I just ran out of wire already. What? <laughs> I'm running through wire really fast. Nice. All right, we got that piece filled in. I think what I want to do next is start on the trans tunnel. The trans tunnel looks really thin, so I'm hoping that this doesn't blow out as much as the firewall did. Luckily, I'm getting used to it and getting better, so I didn't blow out nearly as much on this side as I did on that side, which is good. That means I'm progressing. This is going by really smoothly. And somehow I was able to weld the inside of this section here. Can't even see it, but I was able to connect the welds all the way across. So now we're just working our way around all the way up to here. And then I'll start getting this pillar all the way up to here. But I wanted to show you guys another way that I close the gaps on here. So I actually have the jack under the car and then I'll put the jack right under this spot right here. I want to hit this spot next, but I just remembered that the fuel lines sit right under there. So I need to put something in between there. Yeah, right here. All right, there we go. Dang, we already ran out of another whole roll of wire. Yep. Is that the second one total on the car? Or is that three? 
I think that's the third roll. <laughs> and it looks like we are in need of some gas too. I don't know about you guys, but lately it's been super hot. And my work truck has no AC because one of the AC lines rubbed through and leaked all the refrigerant out. Don't tell the EPA. But I picked up this line, so let's slap it on. First thing you wanna do is take the bumper off. Usually you can start with a good wiggle. So this is the line we need to replace, which is this line right here. And if you can tell, right in here, the line rubbed on the cooling fan and it actually burst through. When I take it off, I'll show you. That is really messed up. So this line will actually connect all the way to this part right here. I forgot that I left this port open, which is a bad idea. So now there's like built up grime and grease inside of this hole. So I wanna try and clean it out the best I can because with AC stuff, you really don't want any contaminants in the refrigerant. So I'm comparing these two lines, the old one versus the new one. And you can see that the new one actually has a worn out spot in a very close spot to the old one. So I wonder if this is a common problem with these. So if you have an Integra with AC, make sure you check this line. Make sure it's not rubbing on your cooling fan. Oh yeah, look at that new transmission. The transmission is much cleaner than my engine that has oil all over it. <laughs> I'm gonna need to do some maintenance on this thing soon. <laughs> Well, this bolt just snapped and now the threads are stuck inside the condenser. So false alarm, guess we're not getting AC today. Unless, would you look at that? We got mail. So I'm in the midst of taking apart all the front end stuff to get the condenser out. And I noticed while I'm taking off this line right here, you can see a lot of refrigerant had leaked out along the edges. So I'm super glad when I ordered this condenser, I ordered a whole O-ring replacement kit. So I don't have to worry about any of that happening again. All right, just got the old one out. This thing is definitely toast. But it does have like a cherry on it. it looks tasty. A couple ladybugs. You can also see all the fins are just completely smashed in compared to this. So we got the new condenser in there, but now I want to start replacing the O-rings that are on the fittings here. So now I match up one of these O-rings to one of these. This one looks the closest, so we'll go with that. So when you're installing new O-rings, you want to use some type of oil that will create a good seal. Pag oil is the best to use for this, but when I don't have pag oil, I just use some motor oil. And all you need is a little bit. Dip your finger in it shiny perfect that's it that's all you need when I originally took off this line from the old condenser this is the bolt that was holding it in and I'm not sure if you can tell or not but it actually took out some of the threads so this bolt is no longer good because that will ruin the new condenser but luckily I keep all spare bolts from previous projects I found these two in there which are identical to the one I need just match it up it's perfect. So always keep your spare bolts, especially if they're in good condition. So we got that one done. I'm just gonna knock out that one real quick, which I still have to put on that new line. All right, we got the new line on there. So before I refill it with refrigerant, I've been thinking about how this line was leaking before and I didn't even notice. While I have no refrigerant in the system, I'm gonna remove the other line on the compressor and then also all the way down here, there's two lines here. Because this car is like 24 years old, those are probably leaking as well. Might as well do it while I have the parts and it's all open. All right, I just replaced the O-rings on the other fitting on the compressor and also these two fittings over here. Try to clean it up a little bit. I definitely have some oil leak issues going on. I think honestly the power steering pump is going out or maybe the seal. 
between the pressure line and the power steering because there's oil everywhere. But that's okay, since there's oil on it, it won't rust. So the last piece is putting on the condenser fan, which goes right here. And before I put that on, there's something I need to do because that is the piece that ended up destroying the AC in the first place. This little tab right here was rubbing on this. It was sitting in there so snug, just like that. I'm not even using this tab, so I'm just gonna cut it off. I think ultimately what caused that problem in the first place is the upgraded radiator that I have because the stock one is like half the size. So it bumped it out just enough for this tab to hit the AC line. Grabbed one of these refrigerants and you connect it to the low side, which is marked as L and it won't actually fit the high side. So you don't have to worry about mixing them up. R134A typically takes about 40 pounds and I revved it up a bit and let it charge until it hit around 40 pounds. And now the AC blows cold. So we got AC in the work truck now.